It was so good. It was like, mate, you got to try and get it off. You have to, you have to call in sick or something. <laughs> I don't want anybody else to do mm. it but you. You know, look, we're humans. We like feeling special. We like knowing that. No, jokes aside, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, we, we like feeling special. We like I mean, knowing. People always ask me this, um, where do you advertise? Mm. I usually don't. My client tend to do it for me. Mm. Hi guys, it's Dems. And it's Compton, and welcome to the Be Cool Studios podcast. What are we talking about today, Dems? Today, we're going to talk to them about how to gain consistent clients for your photography studio. Yeah? Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. All right. So, I mean, there's multiple ways that you can do it, Compton. But I think one of the main things that we've kind of realized so far is um, listening to client feedback. What do you think about that? Yeah, because obviously you're running a business and the business is all about the clients, like what the client needs, you know, catering for the client needs, etc. So we always recommend and, and um, ask our clients, especially people who come to the studio, to let's let us know, like, is there anything that we can do to make your experience in the studio a lot smoother, a lot better? Mm. So we're very kind of hands on in a way, in that sort of way. Um, and nine, nine times out of ten, your new clients come to us and they'll need some sort of help. Mm. So we're always on hand to like, you know, assist where needed. So when they give us feedback, it, that only helps us as a studio. Yeah. Cause I suppose as well with, um, taking on client feedback on board as well, it's important because it allows your studio to grow. Um, it allows you to also give clients a space where they feel safe to, um, give you feedback. So for example, do you remember when we first set up the studio, the the, the makeup table that we had? It was it's a good like, deal though. Was, yeah, you got off that. Like, yeah, yeah, I remember you were proud about that as well. I was absolutely, like, I was absolutely proud when we sold it for more than what we bought. Getting that. Do you remember that we ended up selling it for more than what we bought it for? Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Like, they don't need to know. Don Jefe Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hustler. But yeah, so I, I think the first cup for us, that first couple months, I think about a month or two, I was, yeah. maybe to like the third month we might have changed it i think mm. if i remember correctly it was all about our learning process so as we opened the studio it was about learning what the client needs what the client wants because yeah. we as photographers know what we want from a space but we know that other people might want something different mm. based on you know their requirements so that's why we were like obviously come on let us know what you want us to to improve on and I think one of the other things um, going on, on the back of that was the fact that we, it was a little bit cold because we opened during, basically during when it was getting colder, wasn't it? Yeah, because we opened in August. And yeah, then... and then it was starting to get colder. So the other um, thing that we had to address was heaters. Yeah. And getting heaters in the building. Mm. Um, uh, and bear in mind where we are and where we were at the start of this yeah. venture. We didn't actually have a roof, isn't it? So yeah remember what we had to do with that yeah because with that as well so with the the studio for those of you guys that have not like been to visit us yet so we've got an open top studio so it was originally a gym in which the landlord then broken down into like three different units so you've yeah, obviously yeah, got yeah. ours you got some artists next door i actually walked past the other day saw them like like actual actually artists painted, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you've got the um the hairdressing salon and the end so when we first moved in um, like you said, open top ceiling. And I remember one client that actually booked in, um, at this point, I think we only had like two or three portable heaters yeah. and the studio, it was freezing. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. of the open top, we're in a massive warehouse. So you know, just, it's just, just rising and just going to the roof, isn't it? Exactly. So I remember um, like the client was on the shoot and I remember the photographer and the, um, the model were saying it was cold. So we only literally had like, I think it was like two portable heaters. Yeah. So got both heaters, turned them on the, um, one was on the photographer, one mm -hmm. was on the model. But it was still cold because like in this room, because this is a self-contained room, like heat stays in this room. Yeah. So I remember walking out of this room and then walking out into the main studio. I was like, it is freezing. Yeah. Yeah. So that an example of us taking client feedback on board was you had a genius idea. So because you remember we were thinking, should we pay to get a roof? And then when we got the quote, 
for how much the, to get a roof was going to be? It was extortionate um, for what we needed to put in because obviously, bear in mind the building we're in, you, there needed to be fire resistance and mm. all of that stuff. So, like, this, these walls here, yeah. we had to make sure that these, these walls were all fire resistant wood yeah, and all yeah. this and, you know, all you know, all these things. And these things cost money. So the offer, not the offer, the, um, the quote that we got just wasn't, you know, at that time, yeah. we weren't in a place to actually, you know, do mm. something like that. We didn't have the funds, basically. Let's let's be honest. We didn't have the funds to do something like that. And yeah. investing that, that type of money so early, bear in mind, we had already gone thousands into getting to that point. <laughs> more money, more 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 pennies out of the bank would have been a, yeah. been a stretch. So we came up with the idea of... It was using, your idea. That was a dope idea. Tell them what you... Yeah. Cloth material. Um, do you remember at first when you said you were like, get some cloth? And I, I literally said to my partner, I was like, has this guy lost his head? What do you mean get cloth? How's cloth going to retain heat? But tell him. But yeah, but it's actually work. Yeah. Um, and straight away, I think as soon as we put it up... You can feel the difference. You felt the difference. But also, <laughs> I consciously listen out for the next client that came in mm, after that. Okay. To see and hear if they say anything. Yeah. Um, so, which was obviously positive that we got that feedback mm. um, and we made that adjustment, uh, you know, quickly as possible that help, you know, make that comfort bit for the cost customer, the client when they come in. So they're not actually freezing it. What's off in here? You know what I mean? Because yeah, that's not good for business. No, exactly. And, you know, as a new studio, we're trying to get our foot in the door in terms of um, letting people know about Be Cool Studios, you know, we're here kind of thing. And it was also a case of we wanted repeat custom. So we didn't want someone to come yeah. for a visit, use the studio and then be like, oh, do you know what? It's a dope studio, but it was absolutely freezing. Yeah. So we went to the shop, got the fabric, did an absolute DIY botch job. <laughs> it wasn't the best. Yo, but to be fair, it serves right? its purpose though. Yeah, but to be fair, like um, obviously we don't like to name drop yeah. too much, but we actually had the PLT team in here a couple of times during that that period. Big up and PLT. They, they they also mentioned it. So being a client of their stature, yeah, we needed to act quickly as well. So yeah. the next time they came in and they saw it, they were like, "Oh, cool, you guys did this, wicked." Um, and then we got like we were talking about before getting rid of the maybe we made a bigger. Um, mm. Makeup area as well, and they yeah. were quite impressed with that too. So shout out B again, yeah, um, for coming He's a through. Legend. You know, uh, found a really nice. I think we found the mirror. The mirror was actually left somewhere yeah. in the building, wasn't it? Someone had got rid of them. Yeah, the mirrors because that in the building. That's what's happened. So again, taking the the client feedback on board. So like you said, I remember it was a Sunday. I can't remember what we were filming. Yeah, but like we were really late. Yeah, no, I remember exactly what we were doing. B helped us with a new makeup area. So do you remember that? Because you found that table on, um, should we tell uh, them where we found was, it from? It, you can tell them. Yeah, uh, it's free as well, wasn't it? Facebook Market. Facebook Marketplace was free. I think it was somewhere down like Charlton or something crazy. It was actually like a kitchen, like a kitchen unit part. that someone was yeah, getting rid yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, they obviously got rid of the kitchen unit. And then you went and picked it up. And I was like proud of you because at this time I was at the bargain oh, that I was shit, finding everything. That out. shit nearly did not fit in the car. It was that big. <laughs> it was so big. Like, it was all. But obviously managed to get it in the car sideways like, yeah. like that. Got it in. Mm. Um, got it here. Obviously we did that. We did that up. I actually got a parking ticket that day. Side note. Um, I did tell you not to park there. Got a parking ticket <laughs> at the studio for thingy. But, it was a Sunday evening. I don't. We you did didn't that, think and then the mirror. Good. We found the mirror that night after she went mm. down. She saw it and was like, "Oh, look! Someone's getting rid of this. I think yeah. we can definitely use this." Yeah. And then she managed to put an encase into that. So yeah, yeah, that was dope. Exactly. So that was one way of. Um, that's one way we think that you know, uh, we have gained a mm. couple of you know clients in here that's come back to us because yeah, of that level of care and detail le level of care and attention to detail mm. that we put into the service that we offer that's true and i suppose that then ties into like another way to gain um consistent clients and you know build that loyalty is also being able to implement when a client says you know these are the services that we think would be useful for us but not just the services but making them feel comfortable yeah making them feel at ease um, by doing so, we are, we are able to 
provide a safe safe place for them to come enjoy shoot create dope content um i mean from your perspective what would you say is a way that we have created that safe haven for them to be able to to be comfortable to come in and create um honestly i think because i i look at it from the fact that we're both photographers but creative so we know mm. what it's like we've also implement cameras yeah so security cameras um that helps not protect us but protects the client so yeah that's one way of letting the client know that if there's an issue you know and it's our fault at least we've got evidence that it's our fault whatever mm. and we can solve it for you um and you don't have to worry so i think that personally that's one way um that we've definitely created a, a safer space and everybody's welcome yeah i think that's one of the main things for us like we we don't look at people um of different sex different race or whatever and said oh we don't want this person i told you no every single one we don't care what race you are what pronouns you go by we don't care all we want you to do is come into the studio and just get creative yeah as long as you yeah you just know. be yourself and i think that's important like clients come in and we want them to be be themselves so a lot a lot of the times what i tend to personally do and we, and we tend to do is have a chat with them when they come to you we'll talk to them like get to know them a little bit like hi uh, how was your journey here etc you know that type of stuff yeah like i would talk to them about that and that makes them feel a lot comfortable as well and mm. um, because they it was like oh these guys are sound you know what i mean they're not just oh here's the keys or here's the studio yeah thing we'll talk to them and ask them about how you how you want your light set up and all of this stuff how what you know what kind of setup you're going to go for etc so and i think that is also that's also a skill in itself because I believe one of the ways to gain consistent clients and build that loyalty is client liaison. So before they book, um, during the, the process when they're here and the aftercare as well, when yeah. we ask them, you know, how was your shoot, etc. Because I've used studios before where I suppose maybe it's not in their, their business model to do so, mm -hmm. but I've used studios before where it's simply a case of you go online, you book, you turn up on the day, um, sometimes you might get a high, sometimes it's just, all right, cool, studio's there, whatever. Whereas for us, I genuinely believe our niche is the personable approach. Oh yeah, 100%, 100%. I think like without that, we probably wouldn't still be open because the way we are as, as, as human beings anyway, mm. you know, we're approachable. And I always talk, tell people about this, like as a creative, especially if you're working with certain clientels, you need to be approachable. You need to be someone that people can actually come to and ask a question, you know, without feeling, mm. you know, some type of way about it. So I think that really helps us, the fact that we are both approachable guys. So people can come to us and say, look, I um, some this is wrong or this is not right. Or yeah. can you help us out here? Do you know how to set this up? Well, I think prime, prime example, we recently had a client who first time, first client to shoot, film film yeah and with with our studio lights mm. the people have shot film before yeah but they've shot with continuous light but not with our actual studio light so one of the things you i think i was at home at the time you rang me and asked yeah. me if i know roughly but i've never shot film you mm. know in my life so i personally didn't know yeah but we came up with a solution because we knew mm. and this is why like knowing other creators within the industry comes in handy and we knew someone who had shot film with studio lights in studio yeah. regularly mm. so we just reached out bam got to um got the information that we needed yeah and then you solve the issue for the client and then the client just carry on and had a, a, a cracking shoot isn't exactly it? i'm gonna be honest with you as well right so I, so in the early days of the studio, I remember we used to always have a joke where it's like, do you remember, depending on our schedules, um, whoever was free that day would take the book in. For some reason in the early days, do you remember I always used to get the... Person who wasn't quite I always, sure. Yeah. and because, quite sure. Yeah. And if you remember, you know, I've said it before in my journey, um, Compton's been doing this for eight and a half years now. Yeah. If we tally up the times that I've been doing this, I've been doing this for about two years if I put the time together. And I always used to find it interesting that I'd get like the clients where 
because I was still learning about lighting setups yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And he used to always pick up the phone and be like, Compton, this person's asked for this, what do I do? But I like things like that because each time I picked up the phone and asked you something, I learned something, something. new for the next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were learning as well as thingy. So on this occasion for the once, I remember you were so shocked. I was like, bro. Like, I was disappointed in you. I'm going to be like, honest with you. Because it's not something I've never, <laughs> I've ever kind of like thought about dabbling in. Mm. Like personally, like I love the work that the guys like Sophia, shout out Sophia. Yeah. Um, and also Andrew. Yeah. Um, shout out Andrew. So shoots, yeah, Sophia is the person who obviously who helped us solve the problem for the client. Um, yeah. Like the work that she creates with him is amazing. Oh, she's incredible. Dope, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, I think there's a guy called Volanders that I saw and watch a lot of his videos. Right. Like a kid from Detroit. Mm. Like, like he's got dope film work as well and I think um, seeing what he does helped um, as well understanding that area but I never kind of like thought you know what I need to learn film yeah. I love seeing the process of what people are doing yeah. but I've never thought about doing it myself so that's why I was kind of stuck in that yeah because I remember calling you and I was like right Compton there's a guy in here yeah. he's shooting film yeah. I have no idea what to do <laughs> and then you were like I'm not sure and then in my head now I'm thinking Right, if, if you're not, not sure, sure. Like, like everyone's buggered now, like what, I don't understand what's going on. But like you said, um, you in my head, you were like, oh yeah, Sophia shoots film, yeah. big up Sophia. Yeah. So I literally called her and I'm surprised she picked up the phone. And the only reason why I say I'm surprised she picked up the phone because she's a busy, was, girl. She's a busy, she's a busy woman, yeah. And I base things off me. And if I just see someone calling my phone and I've not spoken to him in a while, not gonna lie to you more time i'll probably just look at the phone and wait for it to ring out again i'm sorry i'm trying yeah to you be know better. they're calling for something <laughs> i'm trying to be better but credit to her she was actually traveling she picked up the phone i was like hi sophia really sorry for calling you out of the blue i've got a tech question that i think only you can answer can you speak for literally two minutes she's like yeah yeah no worries explained everything she's like yeah yeah you just do boom 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 i was like done that makes sense and <laughs> but I was sweating. So when I told him these settings and I checked it right, the whole time I sort of told my partner, I was like, I hope these pictures come out good. I hope these, because film is not cheap, is it? No, no, no. But it was, great, was but fantastic. The, film, the, the images film, came the, out dope. The image came out because we've actually got some of those images and we've posted some of them yeah, in yeah, our yeah. stories as well. So yeah, man, um, credit credit to everybody that got involved to make sure that came came true for the client there. But then that also, the, the fact that we had the ability to just pick up the phone and call Sophia shows that, you know, we're very much trying to build a community of people where it goes back to what I said. There are so many photographers out there, so many different styles of shooting, whatever. There is space for everyone to help each other. Whereas another person might think, well, I'm not helping you. You yeah. should know this. You know what I mean? Yeah, the help yeah, was yeah, there yeah, because yeah. we've built that connection within the community and we are still building yeah. that connection. Um, for me as well, I also, believe another way of gaining consistent clients like with any business when someone supports you within reason you must reward that client loyalty i think that i think that's imperative in any business that you do reward that client loyalty because we already mentioned the fact that within this building alone we are one of x amount of studios, studios. yeah and We've had, you know, many repeat clients and it's a conversation where we've had where we've where we've said, you know, we've looked at our business model and thought, OK, these are the prices that we charge. However, we believe that it's only right that we grant some kind of loyalty scheme to the people who keep coming back, because, yeah. you know, if it wasn't for, for these people that come and use our space and then promote our space, bring other people to our space, Tell we, we wouldn't, about we wouldn't be here, would we? Yeah. So um, in terms of rewarding client loyalty, you know, what are your thoughts on that, whether it's from personal shoots or just from the business perspective? Like from a personal side, in mm. terms of what I, when I do my shoots, um, obviously I've got a fair amount of repeat clients yeah. that um, come, come and shoot with us. So there's always gonna be that slight, quote unquote, mm. discount for them because it's guaranteed income um, the client is always satisfied with the product that we produce at the end of it. So I always do that. Like if someone books with me more than two times, yeah. they're almost guaranteed to have a discount the third time coming. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like it might not be a significant discount, but anything is better than nothing, right? Yeah. So when it comes to the studio side now, um, 
it's quite good that we did that and we do that now and I think there's like a couple of photographers we've all um, offered uh, yeah. a little bit more than just a discount here mm. um, you know <clears throat> so I think that that kind of really helps um, because they can then book and use that time or that discount that they've got for a client shoot that they might have you know and then they they don't lose all that much from the client side yeah so that, that's why I, you know I, I think it's important and, and imperative that you do reward it mm, definitely because you want those clients to keep coming back and not just from a monetary standpoint you want them to come back knowing that it's an incredible space they're free to create um they're always going to feel welcome here and you know, look, we're humans. We like feeling special. We like knowing that. No, jokes aside, yeah. you know, we, we, we like feeling special. We like knowing that if we are going to keep um, visiting an establishment, it's it, it's always nice when boss man, right? It's like when you go to the, chop, the, the, the chicken shop or something after a night out and you always go and you say to boss man, yeah, I want the three piece meal with fries and a drink. And then boss man throws in an extra piece of chicken and gives you the wink. Because it's, it's respect, you know what I mean? Mm. Sorry, I had to bring food into it because I love food. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. I love food. There's nothing wrong with that. But, um, and I think the last last point I, I reckon um, to touch on would be when we implement um, client feedback and then listen to that feedback and then take it on board to then provide the services they require I think ultimately it's just providing um, a space for them to keep coming back and creating more. And I think that's where the ultimate um, loyalty lies within your business. Keep providing that great service and they will return. Yeah, and you know, word of mouth, mm. it's a beautiful thing. People always ask me this, um, where do you advertise? Mm. I usually don't. My client tend to do it for me. Mm. My advertising is basically what I do on my socials. And I don't pay for any adverts on socials or don't pay any sort of social media marketing, none of that. All of it's done through word of mouth. Like I got to the point where I'm at now based off a lot of word of mouth. Um, and people obviously trust that. Um, a good case in point for this is a wedding I did recently. Yeah. Um, I started off doing weddings. It was. The thing I did before, I did probably about 50 weddings in total over eight years, um, which is not big for a wedding photographer, but for me, it is. Um, for someone who always solo. So I did a shoot, a maternity shoot, to be exact, yeah. with another, with his client. And was that the recent one that you did? I was talking yeah. about a while okay. No, no, no. This is, this is probably about two years, two okay. years, three years ago. And right. they got engaged at the same time. Oh, nice. Right? And I remember I was obviously doing my other job at the time. I was working somewhere else at the time. And he got, the guy got in touch with me about doing the wedding. And obviously COVID hit. So we had to reschedule. Finally nailed down a date. Yeah. And then he reached back out again and he was like, mate, um, the wedding's on a Thursday. I was just like, oh, sorry, mate. And you were in work, I was in work those days. He was got it. Like he was so got it. Like shout out Adam. Um, mm. He was so got. It was like mate, you got to try and get it off. You have to. You have to call in sick or something. <laughs> I don't want anybody else to do mm. it for you. But that whole situation, going all the way back, started off from word of mouth through his actual brother, who I'm friends with. Yeah. And I've done some photo shoots with, mm. and then his dad booked me for a job yeah like years before which ended up being published in the magazine as well nice. which I got at home yeah, yeah so that trust came all the way back from then and knowing that family that well he was adamant that I was the only person he wanted to do the wedding mm. right and that level of trust is something that I do not take for granted because the next step with what happened the next couple of months with what happened led me to actually do that wedding without having to ask anyone if I can have a, a day off. Yeah. You know, mm. I can just go and do the wedding. I can go and stay overnight if I wanted to the day before everything. Like, whereas in before, when we first initially booked it, it was like, um, I might not be able to do it, pal. Mm. But then I did it. But then the feedback, even from what 
I got from that wedding. And while at the wedding, I'm getting people come up to me. What's your um? What's what's your what's your email address? What's Did you have business thing? cards? Like, we're gonna talk about that one another day. <laughs> I didn't have I'm business card. I didn't have business card. I, I didn't have business card with me. But I ended up book potentially booking another couple of jobs, which I'm speaking to right now. Good from that wedding on that wedding day mm. because of how I was. Um, as a as a individual on the day, I talk yeah. to people, I smile, you know, and this is what we're talking about. Like, when you're a business owner, you, you need not just put on a front. You need to be genuine with people when they come to your, your premises. Like that genuine reaction, that genuine interaction, yeah, is what's going to lead to them telling people about your business and bringing you more business. Yeah. So for us, every single client has our utmost attention. Yeah. Um. Gets as much help as they need mm. and support as they need. So when they leave here, yeah. you know, they leave here with a smile on their face. Yeah. And what 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 what's our motto? Be cool. Be true. Be you. You know what I mean? Mm. But you know what? To end on a final note, I know I said something about final note before. Do you know I've also realized how um this is personable to us. Do you know how I also know that we've also built um, consistent clients and like loyalty. How many times have we been in here where someone's come to shoot and they've walked in, they've seen the wall of fame and they've seen all the stuff and they're like, oh my God, I've been waiting to sign this, this wall. wall. Yeah, they get super excited about signing That was another wall. dope idea by you. Yeah, because obviously- remember we, at first I was yeah. like, I don't want you white on my walls, Compton. Yeah, and then because I was like, obviously no. everyone did the whole Polaroid thing. Some yeah. people did, it, I think, just being different. Mm. And obviously it's a much more, for me, I think if a Polaroid fall off the thing and you, you walk on it, you tear yeah. it up, you put it in the bin. Whereas if someone writes something that's meaningful on the wall, it's gonna stay there until we actually take the wall out or paint yeah. the wall, you know what I mean? Off the back of, um, sorry, are you on me? Yeah. Right, I'm sorry to cut your content. I always I always say this joke, right? So the Wall of Fame was another brilliant move by Compton, i.e. our creative director. Now, the whole idea was, yeah, get people to sign the wall, whatever. But realistically, one day, someone's gonna come here and sign that wall, right? You know, you, know you love this speech. They're gonna go on and get famous, and they're gonna rip out the wall, sell it, and buy multiple studios. <laughs> Don't worry with him. He's just messing with you guys. He's just messing with <laughs> I'm you. I'm joking. I wouldn't do that, man. But no, legit. That's a that's a that's a feature. That's that's one of our USPs as well. They love coming to sign the wall. Yeah. They're coming like, oh my god, I've seen this. And on some Instagram. of the stuff that they dropped on there as well. You know, like it's it's in it, it's some of it is entertaining. Some of it make you laugh. Some of it make you think. Like you know what? I that's always say dope. to them, try keep it PG. Yeah, like we do. It's dope. a family studio. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. So, you know, make sure next time you come to you come to the Be Cool Studio, make sure you sign the Wall of Fame. Yeah, man, you know this. But that's been another good episode by us. Again, I'm Dems. I'm Compton. And you know the motto, be cool. Be true. Be you. Peace. Manners and respect. Ahua. <laughs> <laughs>